Good evening everybody. I hope everybody that's in the UK is feeling a little bit more optimistic after today's news that there definitely is light at the end of the tunnel and I for one cannot wait to be able to catch up with friends and I've already got a date in my diary when I can do that so feeling a lot more optimistic and yeah excited for the rest of the year now so thank good we've had some positive news even though it's not immediately at least it's though like there's, there's hope at the end of all this so yeah feeling a lot brighter this evening after that how's everybody doing i am really looking forward to talking to tonight's guest um because i've been like most people um, in this last year of the pandemic, really been kind of thinking about my future and how I want to move forward. And apart from that, you have to accept that there's lots of things that you don't know and you need more knowledge. And also, you know, I've been working on self-development and I think the misconception is that when you are a confident person and when you see me on here that I'm super confident and I am much more body confident than I ever used to be, that it's a done deal and you never have to keep working on it. And that's so not the case. I've been having lots of limiting beliefs that have really stood in my own way over the last 10 years that I really wanted to shift and the woman that that came into my life this time last year is an amazing woman called Danny Wallace who I am so grateful that our paths have crossed and she has been amazing and really works with loads of different people and has been a fantastic mentor for me over the last two or three months so I want to be able to come and have a conversation with her to talk about how we do put these limiting beliefs in our way and how we can shift some of this self-sabotage and all the amazing things she's doing because she is just a fire ball of energy and has achieved so much and it's really exciting to see her journey. So I will be joined by Danny Wallace um, very shortly and she is called, fondly known as the I Am The Queen Bee and um, I think it's an amazing title and a great affirmation to be able to say, you know, put your hand up high and say um, you're owning what you're doing because she is the queen at being able to mentor and she's a fantastic motivational speaker. So I will be just waiting for Danny to come and join me and then we will get going. But um, after doing the Midlife Inspirathon, um, because before I did that, I was coming on, on Instagram Lives and feeling really nervous about doing it. And after spending, gosh, what was like 13 hours of live interviews on here. I have got over that and funnily enough I'm, I'm quite happy being on here so uh, that's something that I've hugely overcome so I am just waiting for um, Danny to come on this evening. I think she's here. Hi Christine, I can't wait to come and get my hair cut from you. I am missing you, I can't wait. Good evening. Hello. Hello gorgeous, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. I was like, I was here, and I'm telling you, I'm like, I'm here, Rachel. I'm here, and I couldn't like, I don't know why, but I couldn't go. Like, but I'm here now, I'm and sorry. you're there, and we're here, and I've just got off that um, off the. I was gonna say the live, but it wasn't. It was actually the TV program that um that Boris Johnson was on. Yes, I knew you have got a roadmap to like peeping outside into the outside world again. And God, I'm so happy and excited. Doesn't it just make everything feel so much better and I just feel so much more hopeful and I've got a date in my diary to catch up with friends properly. It's a massive step forward. <laughs> Honestly, like we I mean we've we've been working together for a number of weeks now and I just if if I can't imagine what it would have been like if we could have all got in the room to have had that experience we've just had together and it just makes me so excited for everything that we've got to look forward to. Because you and me met at a real life event last year, right? Yeah, this time, it will have been about this time last year at Natalie Anderson's um, Capsule Body Confidence event, which was an amazing event. And, you know, I, I'd heard about you, but I hadn't sort of seen any of your work. And you just came into my life just at the right time, Danny. I think you were sent to me. <laughs> Some people like sail into people's lives and some people do like a run-up cannonball into people's lives. I feel like that's what I've done into yours. I just came and like ran at you. <laughs> yes, but it was so needed. So we will meet up properly again and I can't wait for that. And actually, and then, for people that don't know anything about you, Danny, how would you describe yourself? Well, well, the people describe me in lots of different ways, but for those of us that haven't met, um, and I, I heard you talking about me kind of being the queen bee and how I refer to myself as the queen bee, but actually it's a, it's, a, it's a reclamation statement. When I say to people, I am the queen bee, what I'm doing is I'm taking back my birthright to success, abundance, health, wealth, happiness, all of those good things in life. And actually it's in me saying that and me sharing my story in the way that I do. I mean, I'm a public speaking coach by, that's my 
job job but i lead um a whole community of people uh, who are choosing to fly anyway who are choosing that their birthright to health and wealth and isn't just the queen's i was fuming rachel when i found out the queen was born the queen and i was born on the council of states of preston i was like where where is my abundance and it turns out that that our abundance is there and it is our it is our birthright but we've just got to be a bit more tenacious about finding it and we've got to be a bit more um we've got to be a bit more clever about reclaiming it so when i say i am the queen bee it's not me rocking up into a place going hey did i tell you that i was the best actually it's me being okay with my confidence and it's me being okay with who i am and encouraging and with my hand out to other people helping other people do the same thing and i'm so lucky that that is my business and i get to do that as my job and you really do you really do help other people rise up i mean i've been on the move b course with you for the last two or three months and you do realize that tonight is just an excuse that i can extend it's just a reason <laughs> normally at eight o'clock on a monday night it's just an excuse for us to hang out again exactly. isn't it? I knew you'd miss me. but i've seen the work that you've done and i've seen the transformation in our group of women over those 12 weeks that's been amazing yeah. i what i really fascinates me about you danny is you do so much for others but also, I've watched your trajectory and your growth, which has been phenomenal in the last 18 months. I'm still how catching my breath. How do you fit it all in? How do you do it all? Well, we saw smoke and mirrors. I don't do it really. I just have lots of videos of me popping around. And that's not true. Um, <laughs> at, at the beginning, it was... It looks like I'm doing a lot because my job is to be on social media. That's, how, that's my main marketing channel. But if I look at my like my suite of services, actually, I've got a few courses that I run, but I run them for a period of time, a few mastermind and incubators that I run, and then I do one-to-one -one work. So what I do is I've been able to sort of concentrate my work into a suite of services that really, really suit my life and really, really suit the way that we're going. Um, so I look after, if I say look, look after may not be the right word, I teach and mentor around um overcoming self-sabotage and getting out of your own way because that's a huge part of my story is that i self-sabotaged for years and it was only until i could get out of my own way that really i started to see any kind of success and then the rising up was the helping people to articulate their business and mission message so that we can all create this massive impact together you know if, you know if i look at you and the incredible work that you do and um around you know body confidence and owning yourself in your midlife i just think it's really important so my my aim my ambition in life is to help as many people share what it is inside them that is going to go and then help other people and it, i get to be this amazing catalyst so in terms of like how do i do it i'm a bit daft i think it's probably the it's probably the 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 best description i'm a bit silly and also i love what i do so much and i'm so invested in what i do that it doesn't feel like work half the time so yeah, i can see that i can see how you gain inspiration from other people that you work with and that, that you mm. really do care and that you're passionate about it and it's been yeah. interesting and i really one of the reasons why i wanted to um you know i've got lots of reasons why i wanted to talk to you tonight but it's about sharing that fact that we you know i've been in, working with you and investing in self-development and, and that's mm. what people are doing now and it's so difficult sometimes for people to talk about because they feel like it's a failure to admit that you need some extra help and support. And it's so important because there's people like you out there that are doing amazing things that I've seen the transformation in myself in the last three months. Mm -hmm. You know, tonight I've just done a post about my body confidence course that I'm launching that I would never have done three or four yeah. months ago. Right. And why don't people talk about it? Why do people kind of have this stigma still that they feel like they can't get it out there and say, yes, I'm working with a coach or a mentor because it's, it's so invaluable. I think it's a, I think it's a misconception that we've got to have it all together in order to be valid. But if I look at the most successful people I know, multimillionaires, people in the media, people in entertainment, if I look at, you know, from investment bankers to business strategists to pop stars, all of them, when they are when they are owning their success, all of them have worked with mentors, have worked with coaches, are always doing things to hone their craft. And the thing is, your success starts inside of you, starts in intrinsic parts of you that if you've not worked on before and you're not in self-awareness of, you will be holding yourself back in ways that 
you won't even realize the whole premise of the of the move be get out of the way program that i do is that is that we start to identify what really are those things are we really holding ourselves back why are we holding ourselves back um the 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 especially in the social media um world that we live in now the the premise that a lot of people a lot of successful and in inverted commas people are that i have it all together i have all the answers but actually and you know america for for however we feel about america the they the the what's the word the trend or the acceptance of having coaches therapists of doing work on self actually is probably one of the reasons why they are always in growth economy is one of the reasons why um you know money isn't a dirty word in in many many american circles and it's because they're at that they're at that point where they accept that they've got to do that personal work in order for us to you've got to kind of crack yourself open in order to allow yourself to think outside of what you've always thought if you've always do what you've always done you'll always get what you've always got how on earth then do you learn what else to do yeah. and having coaches and mentors is such an integral part and a way of hastening, not hastening, of quickening your trajectory to success. Because if you're fanning around in the dark, trying to work it out as you go, that's all right. You'll get there eventually. But why not find the people that are doing the thing that you really want to do and learn from them, yeah. you know, and, and turn up in service of them and say, hey, do you know what? I really admire you. And I, I really admire you. I learn from you, Rachel. And, you know, you're a phenomenal human being. So when you become a coach or when you start to seek coaching, you turn up in service of each other and in service of the people that you want to serve. And I just think that's so powerful and so important. Yeah, and I speak to so, so many women that get into their 40s that do feel this, they have this lost feeling and they, they have done the same kind of routine in life for the last 20 years. So then trying to create that change without having the backup and the support yeah. is much, much harder, which is why I really would urge people that are wanting to create changes in their life, especially in midlife, to, to seek somebody like you out, Danny, because, you know, I've seen the work that you do. And, you know, the, the, we are all kind of baggaged with limiting beliefs that we've just had since we were a child that just grows and grows and grows and we just keep piling it on. And it's about... And carrying it around, getting heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier. And also, there's this huge, ridiculous misconception that women, as they get older, and, no, and this it happens for men as well, but it happens predominantly for women and for, for people who aren't, that aren't straight men, um, that when we get older, we get smaller. When we get older, we should hide. When actually, I mean, again, women particularly are, am I allowed to swear? Our tolerance yeah. for bullshit is less. Our wisdom is more. We see things much more clearly. We have done so much external processing throughout all of our like teen years and 20, like it would go back and be 20 now for all the teen China. No, thank you. Yeah. I just, it, it's, it's almost like there's this expectation on you know, early 20s to late 20s to know your shit, to have your shit together, which is absolutely cool. But I don't know, including myself, I was still felt like a teenager. I mean, I still felt like a teenager now, I'll be honest. But I still felt like a teenager in in my 20s. I was still working life out. I still didn't know my place. And when we talk about confidence, confidence is a quiet knowledge and acceptance of yourself, unwavering knowledge and acceptance of yourself. And that in women gets stronger as they know themselves, as they get older, which is why more and more women, 35 plus, and I work with people right up until the 70s, like my oldest client is in the 70s, um, they become like these powerful beings, like super duper fucking powerful. And it is, a, it is an absolute travesty when I see, and again, one of the reasons why I do what I do, it's a travesty to see people starting to shrink. Oh, I'm in my 40s. I'm like, I'm 37. I'm heading into my 40s. And I can't wait. I'm like, oh, I can't wait to know myself better. I can't wait to get even more out of my own way. I can't wait for all of the success and the abundance and incredible health that I get to give people that's in the future for me because I'm not going to hide. And if I could just infect the world with a little bit more of that and, and we allow ourselves to stand up and become bigger in our in our growth and in our age then i think that's just a mix for very very powerful communities and that's exactly what you're doing and you know now i want to talk about the be inspired event because you know normally you have this big annual be inspired event that people can go to live and obviously with the virus you've had to oh, well, we you have still managed to create what is going to be an epic event so right. tell us all about it so be inspired is like the kind of the jewel in my calendar 
Um, what I do is I work with a number of people through the year on articulating their business and their mission message. And I always say mission message because nobody that I know is in business, whether they're in the service industry or product based industry. Nobody is in business because they don't want to help people. They're in business because they want to help people. So what I do is I work with a number of people uh, and then at an event, a personal development event called Be Inspired, I invite them to come and speak on my stage and we film it and it's incredible. I invite my community to come along and we share stories of inspiration, motivation, business strategy, We all sorts of different concepts, parenting. Um, it, it is such a, a, a wide variety of people that come together for these events and do this learning together in this big purse like cacophony of awesome um so this year we've not been able to do it in real life so what we've done or what i've done is i have um hired a tv studio and in <laughs> just casually yeah. and for two days i am bringing 20 of the most incredible new speakers on the block uh, to share with our wider community inspiration motivation business spirituality like i say parenting it, we're, we're having discussions on masculine and feminine and how the, the dynamics are changing and um, we've just got the most phenomenal speakers uh, that are going to be a part of it so yeah i'm taking that into instead of just another i don't know if anyone else has got zoom fatigue yeah but i've absolutely. got a bit of zoom fatigue so i didn't yeah. want to present another summit where um everyone's sat in the living rooms kind of like we are now and it doesn't feel different like the lives that we do here don't feel different than the zooms that we're attending so i wanted to create something that felt like an event that when you sit down and watch it you feel like you're a part of something and not just kind of a and like a voyeur or you're sat in you know I don't, it looks like the muppet show doesn't it you've seen like the muppet show tonight and all of the all of the little yes. things like it looks like that there's loads of memes about it i don't think that people are muppets i think that you know that's what it kind of looks like and i wanted to give the, uh, my community and, and the, my wider community that opportunity to experience an event as close as we possibly can to experiencing an event without actually being, you know, being able to be in the room together, which we can do from after the 21st of June, which I'm yes, so excited about. Yes. I've got my ticket. I can't wait for it. Presumably, you, you know, part of your training is getting to get the, the, your, your speakers to really overcome their fears and step on the stage and, and, and do their presentation um, with confidence without nerves and right. you know, most people will be running a mile down the road saying I can't do that so right. you know, what are the tips that you can give people to to make those first steps to be more visible and to be able to get their voice heard because it's a huge it's a huge undertaking isn't it it's but it's fantastic and empowering once you've done it it is and I think the thing worth remembering is that it's actually rooted quite scarily in the fear of death so when we are speaking we're positioning ourselves as animals as we are animals we like to forget that we're animals but we're positioning ourselves as an alpha we're saying hey i'm an expert here i know the most on this topic so you're positioning yourself as an alpha now then when you're doing that in the wild there are three possible outcomes one is that everybody accepts what you say which is great but two they could cast you out from the pack and then you'll starve to death or three they will cast you out from um from the pack and you know maybe chase after you and kill you give me just one second abby yeah. what did you just put in your mouth thank you very much please thank you Go on, out your pop. Go on, out your pop. Rescue mum. Doing this at bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy's on hand, I promise you. I'm not just like leaving them feral, although they have been pretty feral. Um, so, yeah, the possible is it's worth remembering that that can't happen anymore. That this, that this kind of casting out and chasing and killing people when they position themselves as alpha is something that's quite, we're quite, quite far beyond that now. But the bit of our brain that is an animal still, the bit of our brain that weighs up what is safe in the world hasn't really caught up with that. Its sole job is to keep you alive and keep you safe and to look around and weigh up a situation. So with speaking, 
the limbic bit of our brain sort of kicks into instinct mode and says, hey, oh, there's the p possibility here that you could be in mortal danger, which is why public speaking is one of the number one fears in the world. So when we realise that that's not a rational fear, a logical fear, it's like knowing the name of Voldemort. You like it, when Harry Potter started to, you know, use Voldemort's name, it took away its power. It's the same thing we, when we know what it is. There's a couple of things that you could do to get out of that space. One, really easy win. Music and vibration have a, an actual physical effect on us. So for the most part, unless, you, you know, there is a sensory issue there. So if you've got a song that has a really great BPM, I always describe it to my clients as the kind of song that makes you do the embarrassing dancing to the dance floor dance. If you've got a song that makes you feel like that. Several. <laughs> <laughs> then playing that song loud before you do anything that you're frightened of will help you raise your energetic vibration. So it'll help lift you up. So uh, fear and ang anxiousness actually has a really low resonance. So when we talk about vibrating high and low, depending on if you woo or not, but actually from a physical point of view, if you raise your vibration from a sound point of view, you feel much stronger. The other thing that you can do is um, Amy Cuddy. Uh, this is not a, a this is not a trick that I have created or taught. There's an incredible TED talk about this um, from Dr. Amy Cuddy, a psychologist. She's phenomenal. Talks about power posing, where we trick the bit of our brain that um, believes that we're trying to position ourselves as alpha into believing that we are alpha. So by standing like an alpha, so broadening our shoulders, hands on hips, um, really planting your feet on the floor. Men do a lot of this in their body language, this alpha positioning. Mm -hmm. They call it man spreading. When they uh, when they taking up lots of space, actually man spreading is an alpha positioning tool that lots of lots of men use on public transport of all places. Like we need to not do that. Um, but <laughs> I'm not now suggesting that we go into like meeting rooms or talks and suddenly start like man spreading <laughs> all over the place, but actually really give some consideration to your body language. Because if you maintain a real strong body language before you do the thing you're frightened about, you actually trick your body into thinking that you're alpha. It triggers off the alpha hormones, testosterone. So when you feel scared and your adrenals fire off cortisol, the two can't live in the same space. So power posing before you do the thing that you're frightened of and listening to some banging music is actually some real quick wins before you hit up um, doing something that you're frightened about, like speaking on stage. So you've been, you've, that's one of the things I love about you as well, is that you give out so much information for free because people are often really scared about approaching coaches and mentors because obviously they think, well, I can't afford it right now. But like right now, you're doing an amazing challenge on, on Facebook, which is a free yeah. free event that people can join in and learn so much from. Yeah, you win prizes. Um, I can give you things away. And, you know, that's how I first started with, with you is to, to, to kind of dip my toe in the waters to see. So where can people find out about that? What are you doing this week? So this week we're doing the Move Be Get Out of the Way Challenge where we are challenging our own self-limiting um, behaviours. So what are the things that we do to get in our own way? Once we've identified them, then how the F do we stop that from happening? How do we then begin to take the steps forward into where we really want to be? So in the I, it's spelt I-A-T-Q-B. So it stands for I am the Queen Bee. So it's an acronym. So the IATQB Hive on Facebook is my free group. And you can come on in there and you can catch up because all the videos are on the announcements. Um, there is a live from this morning that will do like the teaching. And then there's a little accountability thread. There were a, set, a really small task. It's dead easy to take part. It's a little reflective piece. So they, they think the live from this morning is about 45 minutes long, something like that, where we do some teaching and reflection. And then I set you a task. And then if you do the task on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, then you are eligible to win things like £250 Amazon vouchers, uh, Harvey Nichols hampers. We've got IATQB merchandise like this. Um, so we've got all the sorts on the table and that's really to just encourage people to, to, to start to think about these things, especially now. Like, I don't know about you, Rachie, but I was really tired off of the back of this particular lockdown. Yeah. It's become an ultra marathon. It's not, was, it was never a sprint. Yeah. It was never just a marathon. It was like a series of marathons back to back. And I feel like now is, especially after today, it's such a great time to be thinking, popping our head above the parapet and thinking, where next then? What now? 
now I can start to think about what this new normal, old normal, whatever normal is going to look like. Where's my place in that? And what is success going to look like for me? And if I can really be clear about what that success is, then also the thing I need to be clear about is how might I sabotage that? How might I be fearful around that? Because sometimes when we think about success, one of the things that we do is we get in our own way about it. Yeah. Like I procrastinate. <laughs> I love that word. <laughs> I'm a procrastinate. <laughs> so, you know, look, you've got all this going on, but also you've got some huge changes. I mean, there has been a real shift for you. The more you yeah. are a classic example of someone that has put themselves out there and become more visible and, you know, you're a credit to all the work that you've, you've built up. And now things, exciting things are happening. So how does that feel? How are you dealing with, with making sure you don't self-sabotage yourself and, and you know, taking all the things, practicing what you preach. Yeah, I think that's the thing though, Rachel. And one of the reasons why I created um, Move B was because I wrote a book um, last year that is about overcoming self-sabotage. It's, it's called I'm the Queen Bee, How I Overcame Self-Sabotage to Fly in a Way and How You Can Too. And so it's all really good writing the book. But it was a really cathartic thing for me. I actually had to sit down and work out, like, what were my sabotaging behaviors or what are my cyclical sabotaging behaviors what do i do regularly because this isn't a once you've identified it you never ever do it again yeah. they they are behaviors that you will always come back to but again when you know what they are you get to you get to what well, tell them to sit the fuck down you get to work through them then it's much easier then to to think all right i'm what i'm doing here is a stress response because I don't feel safe. I don't know what that success feels like. So I, so my body's trying to keep me safe from it. It's a perfect example of this. One of the big changes for me is that I've just bought a house. Yay! <laughs> I'm so excited about that because 10 years ago I was homeless. Mm. So for me, I've stayed in the house that I live in on an estate that isn't the safest, mm. in, the, in the, a house that is too small for us because I've been too scared to create a living space that really we deserve and it was only when i started to realize that it was because i was too scared to look at the finances to learn about the work that was involved to actually dare to stand in the showroom and in the show home and go actually actually i can do this yeah. um and then realize that i'd not been making any of those moves out of fear for so long and once i'd allowed myself to strip all that back I was able to make the inroads in and we move in on the on the 19th of March this year. That's so exciting. It's really, I, was, I drive out there every day. I embarrass myself in front of those builders, you know, Rachel. <laughs> I uh, I drove out there. To, I've got a doorstep today. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> I've got a doorstep. Um, it's it's a new build, so it's in every brick go on it. This bloody house. But, um, but it, it, I created it because I wanted to be able to check in with myself as well. So a lot of what i teach within my community not necessarily my public speaking stuff because i'm a speaker and that's you know I, I teach that skill from my time in corporate mm -hmm. but this is a really great way selfishly for me to check in with myself so when you and i were going through move b together i'm sharing with you what my journey is at the same time as you guys i'm yeah. constantly checking in and i think that's a, a way that i'm able to lead from the front with this and to practice what i preach and to say actually no i'm feeling it too i know what this is like mm -hmm. i drank too much over the weekend because I thought that, you know, I was stressed out and I was, and I was rewarding myself for having a really trying week. And actually, that's really self-sabotary because if you if you think about, like, you've had a tough time, are you going to reward yourself by poisoning yourself? Like, what is that? So it's really, from, I go through this with everybody uh, at the same time. So it's a real journey. It's a real, like, it's been an absolute love fest for us, hasn't it? It's like, we've yeah, come really out of this. Like, I think everybody in the group's like, oh, no, what we're going to do on a Monday night now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've had a Monday night anyway. <laughs> but equally, I've now got new friends and people that right. I've now connected with that I know that I would like to continue to support on their journey right. and vice versa. So I think it's it's a win-win situation because I've learned so much and I've progressed and, and I've started this journey now that I know I won't stop. But equally, I've kind of started to build another tribe around me, if you like, of supporting like-minded people, which is part of what you're, part of 
the whole process isn't it it is it so is and i think that doing that in safe spaces is really helpful when you're trying to if you, we talk about tribe building or we talk about you know surrounding yourself with the people that you aspire to be like or you know if you surround yourself with five millionaires then you'll be number six if you surround yourself with five positive people you'll be the sixth so when you create safe spaces and when you enter safe spaces to do that growth work together and some of that shadow work some of that's painful work some of that's realizing things about yourself that you might not actually like very much and when you can do that in safe spaces with people that are understanding that that is a safe space too then you do come out of these things super close because actually the people that you go through these experiences with no one on the outside would really understand that until they've been through it so having a big whenever you go through any kind of mentorship or any kind of mastermind or anything where you you're with a small group of people where you've shared in that way you end up with best friends for life anyway you you end up with staunch supporters because no one else understands your breakthroughs in the moment as well as what we all do when we're together and i think that's that's the magical bit i think of, of move being particularly yeah definitely so how can people find out about move being again so they can go to so we've got the challenge this week which is completely free to take part uh you go to uh the iattv hive on facebook and you just go and join in um you can get more details about the challenge and what's involved by going to i am the queen uk forward slash move b challenge and then we're going to open the doors again on thursday uh to another cohort feels like i'm cheating on you rachel well, I know. But I'm not. <laughs> So we're opening the doors to another cohort uh, for Move B on Thursday. And you can get details of that whole package on IamTheQueenBee.co.uk. And if you just go to packages, it'll be under Move B and all the details are there. I'll put the links on my stories as well. So. Thank you. It's been a pleasure to catch up with you again. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, I know. I'd love to do it again. I know, definitely, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, well, I know we're going to be keeping in touch because uh, I'm yeah. not letting you now. I'm not letting you go We've now. got a lot to do. We've got a lot to do, Rachel. Yeah. I know your, your journey has been phenomenal to be a part of, even in this just this small way. And for, I know you've got so many lovely incredible loyal supportive followers and they they love and support and follow you because you are a phenomenal human being so thank you for being a phenomenal human being rachel peru i love you very much i love you too thank you so much <laughs> speak soon thanks Dad. bye bye well, honestly, I have so much love for that woman and I hope you really enjoyed um, Danny's energy. She is so genuine and authentic and really just wants to help rise, you know, other people rise up and her journey has been quite incredible. I did do a podcast interview with Danny as well um, last year, so I will share the links for that so you can go back and listen to her story. And her book is amazing. I've read that twice. So I am, as you can tell, a huge fan of Danny's work, but I just wanted to bring her on here and share some love for all the great things she's doing. I Talk about self-development because I think it's really important and part of everyone's journey and you know especially through this pandemic it's definitely been something that I've really enjoyed being able to spend that time on myself so thank you so much for joining us all it's been lovely to catch up with people and I will be um, back next week for some more Monday motivation and inspiration but yeah nice to end the day on something inspiring and with a bit more hope for the future after today's news so take care bye soon